All right, so this is our Truma Combi that I installed in a 2021 Ibex, uh, Forest River Ibex 20BHS. And uh, I changed a few things around in here already, and it actually it works out really well for our needs. So the lousy thing about the 20BHS is that it doesn't have any drawers. So you're kind of wondering, you know, where are we supposed to put our utensils and, and other things for the kitchen area? Um, and it doesn't have anything. The only drawers in the whole in the whole RV are, uh, you know, on either side of the bed, there's a single drawer. So uh, I didn't realize that when I was kind of shopping for it, but quickly realized that, oh, not having drawers is, that's a, that's a pretty big deal. So I wanted to find a way to add some drawers. And, uh, and then I also, uh, in our case, our uh, suburban furnace, you know, which is uh, not anything good and super inefficient and loud and, and just, it awful just anyway I'll, I'll leave it at that i just don't think um, very much of them as you can tell um so wasn't a fan of that 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 failed uh just you know driving it off the dealer's lot brand new uh on on the first night and the second night it was shutting off in the middle of the night i'd had to uh, get up and uh, turn the thermostat off and then turn it back on and reset things and uh i just didn't want to i didn't want to have that uh that headache so I went ahead and imported this Truma Combi. This is just the Eco. Uh, there's the Eco and the Eco Plus and then the Eco Plus Comfort, I believe it is, or maybe it's just the Eco Comfort. I think it's the Eco Plus Comfort. So I really, really wish that I would have been able to get the, um, you know, the Eco Plus or especially Eco Plus Comfort. That would have been amazing, but unfortunately I couldn't get my hands on one uh, because Truma does not want this uh you know this unit to be sold or any of their uh, stuff to be sold to the aftermarket uh, world so uh anyway so i got uh, i was able to get my hands on this one brand new and that was from trumaheaters.com and sadly they I, I don't know if they were approached by truma or what but they they changed their game plan and they no longer sell these units so it's kind of back to the drawing board in terms of how to get one of these, uh, and it really shouldn't be because I think people that are looking to do these kind of modifications, uh, you know, they actually do care about the details and they want to be able to, uh, you know, do things right and and have a great, uh, you know, a very well engineered system like this. So I have I have no complaints about it. It's it's absolutely wonderful. It's super quiet, uh, incredibly energy efficient, uh, or you know, efficient in just sipping uh, propane. Uh, but it would have really been nice to have the one that also has the electric heat built into it uh, because in my case I also added in there's four ports on the back of this of this Truma Combi and that's four ports uh, four ducts that come out of this that you can uh, you know feed you know heat into the area um, and so this this top port back here let me see if I can zoom in for you um, so the top port back here goes down at you know per the specs they want it to go down and then uh, dip down to the lowest point and so that's why that that and everything goes down the reason for that is that in the summertime when you're not needing the heater but you still want to utilize the the water because it's a combination of course you know hot water heater and furnace you know, if you want to have the hot water, but you don't want to have heat dumping out, then Truma, uh, you know, specifies to have these um, ducts go down so that the heat doesn't, you know, if it goes up, the heat's going to rise and it's going to rise and the heat's going to go into the room. Um, so that's that's the idea or the reasoning behind that. So that back port just comes down and then it just goes over and then it just ports out the side over there by the door. Uh, which is where the old one was, so that actually worked out um, real well. And then this other one on this side, I just have it bending around, and then it goes into here, and then I had to kind of modify things a little bit. Uh, so I have that going into here, and then you can see this is just a, a gate valve um, by Valterra, and that is then going on a 90 that goes down underneath here. So in my case, I um, kind of went overkill on the underside, and I took the whole undercarriage. It's got that, uh, 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 what is it, the corrugated plastic that is called insulation, but it's not insulation. It's, you know, protecting from some wind and some, you know, uh, mud and, and, and stuff getting from underneath there. So it's, it's still good to have it, but in terms of insulation or, you know, insulating value, it's, it's non-existent. I don't know how anyone could call that... Uh, you know, insulation. It's it's simply not so, um, and it's they it's not um, 
it, it's not as if it's completely sealed up under there. They did a great job as a whole, but there's still several spots where air gets in there. So um, anyway, so I tore out the whole underside and then I ended up putting in a two inch thick uh, foam board. And that foam board is actually from the um, tile industry and it's called uh, Schluter Curdy. Um, or excuse me, um, yeah, it's Schluter Curdy board in this case. And so that's two inches thick and I think it's um, maybe 24 inches wide by uh, eight or I think it's eight foot or 10 foot long uh, panels of it that are you know 24 inches wide by 10 feet long. So in my case, I ran them this way um, going across and then I put some, I ripped some plywood for those uh, in between at the seams so I can actually take any panel off to access the underside anytime I want. Um, and it's just great. So it's really well insulated down there now. I insulated the underside of the I-beam or the inside of the I-beams um, going you know, down the length of, of each side. I insulated those with spray foam insulation so then that way the cold won't radiate inward. Um, so it's very well insulated. So that's kind of the little, uh, you know, the garage or the undercarriage, you know, you could say that's very well sealed off. And so after sealing it off, I figured, well, you know, I want to make sure that I can, uh, you know, prevent anything from freezing down there. And just sealing it off and having insulation down there isn't enough. Eventually the cold will get in and it's going to freeze. So in my case, I went ahead and added this one of the, one of the four ducts, so the heat ports that come out of the back of this unit I have going down underneath there and then I have that running along the length of this and I drilled um, eighth inch holes 3 16th I think it's 3 16 inch holes um, along the duct work which it's that duct right there um, which is Webasto is is the brand of duct work um, that I went with because I couldn't get the Truma actual duct work but it's the you know the identical uh, product um, so I went along the whole underside of it and drilled holes, and um, and so that gets diverted down there, and it keeps that. So we can go down to zero degrees Fahrenheit um, without any issues of of having anything freeze and without uh, you know turning anything off or draining any water or anything like that. So uh, super happy about that. And then in the summertime, or if it's not freezing outside and we don't need heat going to the undercarriage, then we simply just, you know, just close that gate valve and then more, more heat, more air will be distributed uh, up here um, than down there. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, this yellow here, this is um, the uh, winterizing or drain port, the, the bottom, uh, the low point drain valve. And so this is not automated, so it's not as if, you know, when it freezes that that just automatically lifts up. This is something where you have to, you know, if you're getting into cold weather and you have any water in this, right, and you need to drain things, then that's where you just lift up on this. Um, this is winterized right now, so you just lift up on this, and then the water will drain out. And in this case, I just have this going uh, all the way down through. It just has a um, just some tubing that I converted over to... Uh, some more of this PEX tubing um, that just goes down and then I cut a 45 on the PEX tubing, not that you really need that. Um, and uh, and then that just drops down uh, and, and just drains out on the ground. So that works well. And then again, this is all in the instructions in the instruction manual, um, you know, the installation manual. Um, so you need to have some shutoff valves. Um, and so I added these. These actually work really well. Um, and so for my needs, everything's great. And then it's just all these connections, um, you know, just use the crimp tool uh, for everything. So, and then also in my case, it's that this, I think it's only 2.4 gallons in here uh, for the, the actual water tank. Uh, so that's not much. And so I figured, well, you know, that I might as well keep our water heater that came with this because uh, that holds six gallons of water. And so we're boondocking, so it's good to have more more water on hand. And so, I left that in, and I actually have our our water goes from uh, from our fresh water tank into the current or the one that came with it, the water heater, and then from the water heater it comes over to here, and then it runs through this, um, and then it goes to and then it goes out from here. So by doing that, I can you know it's kind of a redundancy, but I can use either one. I can have that hot water heater running, right, that came with the BHS, 
and then I can just have the hot water flow through here and onto wherever it's going. Or, um, you know, I can have this hot water heater on and not the other one and have heat, or I can have both on. So it, I figured, you know, for the time being, you know, it was already installed, so I might as well just leave it and, um, and just utilize it that way. So that works well. And that's part of the reason why um, I have this uh, one-way check valve right here is that I don't want, if I have the hot water going, um, you know, going, coming along here, the supply, the supply hot water coming along here, I don't want it to push down and go down and go backwards into the Truma unit, right? Only I want hot water only coming out of the tr Truma unit after it's supposed to be heated, right? And I don't want it to be, ever be forced back down from the other hot water heater, if that makes sense. So that's why I have this check valve right here. That's not... You know, because I kind of customized this insulation for, you know, installation for my needs, you know, this isn't, of course, mentioned in, in uh, you know, Truma's, Truma's uh, installation manual. So, um, so anyway, then we have the other, uh, this is the, um, the uh, in air intake and exhaust right here. So there's another uh, line inside of this, right? And this comes in the kit. And then this just comes out and just vents out to the exterior. Um, and you know it has the the proper angle on there and then you need it to have a source of power in this case the source of power because this is just the eco is just 12 volts so in my case i used some some t connectors and i tapped in um well actually that was for what was that for i'm not sure that, that's for the thermostat is what that's tapped into um uh, for our air conditioner because i worked on that as well but anyway so you can disregard that that doesn't really apply but but it does have 12 volts of power coming into this unit right here and it was a piece of cake to you know to make that connection um and then what else the gas line i have it's kind of hard to see here um let's see if i can get some light so the gas line I have wrapped around, you can see that I've got it supported um, and it's kind of, and it's got the rubber support going around it because you definitely don't, uh, you know, with the vibration and all the rest, you don't want to ever take any chances of, you know, putting metal to, to affix the uh, gas line and have vibration, you know, actually eat into the, um, you know, the gas line. So that's why you can see, um, you know, that's, that's definitely secured properly. And uh, you have the cold water coming in, right? So it comes from the very back and then it and then it comes in and then it comes across and it goes in and then of course it comes out here. Um, and then this is a condensate tube, I believe right here. And then that also goes underneath the uh, the RV that just goes straight down to the uh, to the exterior, and then if that's ever you know uh, leaking or, or draining any water, then that that'll just go straight outside. So that's kind of an overview of things. And if you want to dig into more details, I'm happy to you know to, to get into more details. The unit is actually running right now. I don't know if you can see the fans running, but it's running, and it's really quiet. So I have. The other one going right here, so I have, as I mentioned, one source of heat going outside, or going uh, ducted right to the side there of this cabinetry, one source of heat duct going to the underside of this whole um, uh, RV, and then I have one going over here, and then I have one in the shower, or in the bathroom, underneath the shower pan, and that is actually plenty for this 20 BHS. It keeps it toasty warm. And on, even on this Eco model, it has two different modes for the fan. It has what it's on right now, which is the Eco mode. Um, so it runs really low uh, and super, super quiet. And then it's got the, you know, the, uh, in this case, it's not boost, but it's this just, you know, a higher fan speed. And you can hear that a little bit more, but it's, I mean, it's, you just, it's just so quiet, this setup. I mean, it's a night and day difference from, uh, from the suburban setup of the suburban furnace in, in terms of efficiency um, and in terms of you know sound everything about it is just way 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 better than than suburban so um, anyway I hope you found this helpful and then in this case I also found um, a uh, a 12 by 24 um, you know uh, uh, furnace filter opening basically and so I have 
this furnace filter that I end up putting in here, even though that doesn't really, in this case, make sense because it's able, this is where the air intake is and it's able to draw air from other parts. So, but I figured, ah, well, I've got it. So I might as well just put the, the filter in here and then I close it up uh, and, and that's it. So hopefully you found, uh, found this useful. And if you have any questions, uh, of course, reach out and, and happy to, uh, to answer them to the best of my ability. Take care.